It's been a, been a hard day today. It's been a hard day today. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, I thought you was running a tight ship over there. You was all Mr. Scheduler. That's when school is in, right? It makes a difference when school is out. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's good. It's good. Um, Right now, you know, the, the kids, you know, they've been in, uh, we, we've been in quarantine and stuff like that. So um, it's been a little bit more difficult. And then still, with COVID-19 period, it's, it's added a lot more stress to um, us as parents anyway. Right. Because, you know, anything happened, the kids got to be home. Now we got to uh, re restructure our, you know, our lives, you yeah. know, because of the kids having to be home. So that's, that's crazy all in itself. Well, so, no, I, still, I, I still run a tight ship, though. It's been 10 months. So everybody hasn't got it together yet. It's been 10 months of the kids home. You know, my kid is home. And I work from home, so I feel like now you're in my office. Like, you're at my job. I never yeah. tried you to work with me. And now you're <laughs> at my job asking me questions. I tell them, I'm not here. I'm working. I, I'm. You don't see me. <laughs> Period. Right. But the kids don't hear that. The um, administration for the schools, they don't hear that, you know? Yeah. And it's like, it's almost like we all have to do what we have to do. Yep. So, so I could have, hey, listen, I can imagine some, some look kids being left at home by themselves. <laughs> that would be like, Go on. May the good, um, may the good Lord bless you. <laughs> period. Period. Now, I'm scared to do that thing because my kids will tell. And they're little. They're too <laughs> to do that. Oh, not they would tell. You you didn't say it because it was wrong. You said because they would tell. <laughs> no, actually, my kids are very responsible, you know? So right. I'm pretty sure I could leave them at home by themselves. You know, I taught, I taught my kids how to cook, how to clean, you know, um, you know, so that they can live by themselves for real, you know, yeah. without um, an adult supervision. So, you know, we, we've done a pretty good job with raising our kids. And they're only like eight years old and what, both of them, Martell and Mariah, they both eight right now. Oh, yeah, they grow. And, um, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. That's some job applications. No, nah, I, I want my kids to be kids as long as possible, though, to be real, you know? Because right. I'm going to miss those. I'm going to miss these days. Yeah, they're going to miss those days, too, when they get in college and have to pay for stuff. After college, maybe they'll miss yeah. it. You know, we still really do stuff while they're... Up to 21, I say. <laughs> it don't never stop. Basically. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you. It stopped at 19. When I walked out that door, that was it. Bye-bye. I never asked for a dime. I was done. Okay. So yeah, you're yeah. almost a single man again. And you're a single dad. You're doing oh. daddy duties. Uh, what was that? Yeah, I'm... Almost a hundred percent single, right? Yeah. Okay, I thought. But, I mean, um, the, the, on the almost, I was like, "What?" Uh, the people want to know. Yeah, no, I, I would definitely say Melody and I, we, we both are single right now because she's doing her thing, and um, she would say that Martell, you've been doing your damn thing, but um, you sounded just like her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, you know, we we both doing our doing our own thing respectively. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, yeah, so so we're single. Wow. So you yeah, we are. Look on your face when you said that, like, we're single. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough. It's hard, you we know? <laughs> you wasn't like, I'm living a single. <laughs> you were like, we're single. Yeah, no, because it's, it's, it's tough. Huh? Sad? Does this no, I'm not going to say I'm... Uh, it's a it's a bittersweet type thing though, you know, because I, I know that it, that's something that has to be done. Like we have to part ways, but the tough part comes in when we we talk about our children and raising our children. Four of them. It's not two of them. It's not one of them. It's four. Yeah. So when we talk about four children and wanting the best for them, you know, it's like our backs are against the wall, and we just don't know. Because right, even if we were married happily and all that it's still gonna be difficult to raise four children yeah it's a lot back so to you think about back. yeah now you think about going through a divorce with four children four small children i know like, man, it, it, it breaks me down every day just thinking about it you know right right i used to because i was from a two-parent household so 
whenever I go to like recitals, it would really break me up emotionally knowing your kids don't have both of their parents. But the younger ones, if that's all they know is you guys being apart, then they won't miss anything because they won't have memories of when you were together. The two little yeah. ones won't really, it won't affect them as much as the two older ones. Right, yeah, yeah. And yeah, but it, these days, like they had um, something on the reel and they asked, is it better to stay together for the kids, but the kids see you all dysfunctional and then they grow up thinking dysfunctional is okay. Or should yeah. go ahead and separate and everybody's happy and make that their new normal. Yeah, well, I, I would say that is is no particular way to do anything when it comes to a marriage or relationship or raising children. It's almost, I would look at it as, if you want to do it for the children, do that shit. Right. And case, if you want to say it again, that a case by case scenario. It's a case by Most case. Scenario. I totally agree. It depends on how you feel, how you want to approach it, how you want to live your life, you know? Because if it worked for me this way, that doesn't mean it'll work for you, you know? You guys have a, a fairly big house, right? Because you guys are known as the custom big home builders in Huntsville. So do you think that you could work as roommates? Like you stay on that side of the house, I stay on this side of the house and live separately? Do you have a basement? No, no, no. No, we got um this house is like 5700 square feet, six bedrooms, six bath, but I don't I don't think that we could have it, it it's crazy, I'll be real. When I last um before Melody moved out, you know, she tried to shake my hand and say that we can we can live together. Oh, I got damn, I got 10% left. Damn. Where's your charger? It's I, I don't have a long one. I'm gonna have to get in the corner with you, Donnell. Right. Hey, but, hey, but listen. Better anyway. In the corner. Listen, but um Melody had, you know, she wanted to shake my hand and be like, hey, listen, this would be like a, a deal for us. And saying that Move over a little bit. You know, we can we can live together, but you know, we won't be sexual and all that kind of stuff. Scoot back huh? over because your Wi-Fi what? broke up a little bit. What? Scoot back Shoot. over near get near a window or something. <laughs> Since you're on the phone, you can get near a window. Cause your Wi-Fi. Yeah, I'm, I'm right. I ain't got to sit right here. That's right, Jonelle. Why right, you got the phone? <laughs> but I'm on this mountain though, so I don't know where's a good spot. Do it or not, you know. Wait a minute, it's like, walk slower, so I can be like right there, right there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right there. Let's see. Not too much. Not, okay, let me sit down with that thing. <laughs> I'm like, you're still moving. <laughs> Okay, let's see how the Wi-Fi is right there. All right, good. Good? Mm. No? It's okay. Really? Okay, Damn. say the whole sentence so I can see. You have to say that last sentence again because that's important. When you were yeah, asking I'm... a question about if you could be roommates and do right. it. But um, like I mentioned, like, you know, Melody, you know, she wanted to, like, come up with an agreement that, you know, we just stay in the same house, you know, not be sexual, anything like that. So that was more of saying like, okay, we're going to be, we're going to have other partners outside of this house. I'm not having that shit. Get going. Bye. We good. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't, I can't have. Yeah, on her because the kids would have been right there under one roof. And then with the little ones, she could have passed it off like, oh, I got to sleep in the room with the baby because, um, you know, I don't want to wake your dad. He's he's so busy. He needs his rest. And everybody would be there. Yeah, that was just the initial. That was like um, the conversation before she really moved out, before she kind of um, brought some other stuff to my attention, too, though, you know? Oh, and then you was yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was about to go to jail that day. Don't be bringing all this stuff to my attention at one time, girl. What's wrong with you? Well, you know, it's weird because normally the man is the one with his suitcase packed and leaving. And oh, you see, flipped it in reverse. 
Oh, yeah. See, see, over the years, see, Melody, she always been the person that leave. Like, even before we had kids, we get into it a little bit, she gone. She go stay two nights in the hotel. Then we start having kids, she do the same thing. So uh, that's why I always thought that Melody always was cheating on me, because she would always be the one to leave. Uh, I, I've never, I, I never left my house. I never left her. I never left my children. To this day, I would say, I would never leave. Period. Yeah. Ever. Well, there should be open room for her right there. There should be what? <laughs> An open room for her right there. Yeah. <laughs> Always, yeah. her, and, you know, working out now. And then you know, yeah. homie's like, what's up, Mel? What's up? Yeah, I mean, I'd probably be open to it now, you know. Double I'm date? Like, hell no. Mm. no. Double date? <laughs> nah, she'll get one of her little men hurt around here. I don't play that. That would be so funny because I could totally see you saying, oh, yeah, I'm cool, I'm cool. And then as soon as that person get there, you <laughs> bombing up. <laughs> All day, not playing around. Martel, it's a new year. It's a new you. It's a new season, January 30th. What will we see different about Martel in 2021 that we did not see in 2020? We're talking about on love and marriage, Chancel. Yes. <laughs> hey, listen. All the way around, what's different? Well, I'll tell you what's different. For, for me now, I'm not protecting my wife. What you uh -oh. say? I said, uh, I was like, besides the situation, what's going to be different? The okay, yeah, the di yeah. So the difference is, is like, I'm not in protecting mode. Like, I'm not having to protect my wife. I'm not having to protect friends, anything like that. Now it's like, Martell is gonna protect himself. I'm gonna protect, you know, my children. So I'm not allowing people to say anything they want to to me. I'm not allowing, say, Melody's brother to, you know, act as if he'd been in her life, my children's life for a long time. I'm right. not allowing nobody to say anything sideways to me. Period. Um, I want to get on here and handle business, huh? Martell unleashed. I, I would I would say that Martell unleashed, not Martell hope not playing. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get on here. I'm going to, um, you know, I'm going to showcase my life, good, right. bad, indifferent. I'm going to be open about it. And um, I'm going to be me, authentic, you know? Right. Well, and in real life, I don't I don't play that shit. And on camera, I don't play that shit. And it's going to be known that I don't play that shit. I will punch you in your nose if you get beside yourself. I promise. I don't play that. That's I'm real. You going in nose this year? Okay. I don't play. It's now. Yeah, I'm, I'm serious. Because I don't know. I, you got to tell me. <laughs> Bill money stash. Somebody got to come get you. <laughs> Say it again. You got to tell me where the bell money is stashed. <laughs> you get you, so you know. They say yeah. you fight your battles for as much money you got in bail to get out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, because I know. Hey, during during one episode, you'll see. I was about to go to jail and wasn't playing either. Oh wow, you was about to risk it. Oh Martel, I don't know. Hey, this show, hey, it's turned up, it's turned up season. I'm telling you. But you it's, know um hey, it's um like real housewives of Atlanta back in the day with Nene. Oh <laughs> when Nene was whooping everybody ass. Nene was from Athens. What was her name? Uh Lanithia. <laughs> Lanithia <laughs> from Athens was taking off her earrings, like look, look. Whooping it, man. Yeah. So wow. I think that's what Love and Marriage Huntsville is about now. Or it's getting there. Something like that. That's hilarious. So um, did you guys get resolved, the whole friendship thing? Like, how is it? Because at the reunion show, oh, it was serious at the last reunion that we saw. Everybody yeah. was like, look, and... I don't know, Kimmy and her mama and all of that stuff and her husband and then your boys. Like, are y'all still boys, boys? Or is it kind of like, oh, what's up, dog? Yes. Yeah, so, so we all we all got true history. You know, we all went to college. Well, everybody went to college together except for Kimmy and uh, Melody, for real. So, you know, I went to I played football with um, one of the brothers. Uh, we went to college together and all that kind of good stuff. So we got real history together. So. We've uh, we've gotten past um, the little situation that we had because it was really it really stemmed from the ladies, right? Our issue really stemmed from the ladies. <laughs> so that's why I said I'm not protecting nobody. Um, so the guys know now that 
we we at like square one. We know what the issues were. We fixing it. Let's not have any more issues. You know, because okay. if we have any more issues, it's gonna be real issues. You know, so right. we good. That's great that men can come together more easily and say, you know what, we bigger than this. Let's squash yeah. it. Let's start. Let let's erase it and let's go grab a bite to eat. Let's go shoot some hoop. Let's go to the gym. Yeah, yeah. So you know, we all um we all doing our own thing now, and um you know just trying to keep our relationships away from women. Because we know this when it get messy, you know? Right. Yeah. Well, men can be messy too now. Sometimes men can get together and be messier than one woman. Just mess. Well, a, a real man don't be doing all that. Not for real. Un, un, unless, unless it has something to do with a woman. You know? Yeah. Pillow talk could get you every time. It's oh, the- shit. Yeah, yeah. That pillow. Yeah, pillow talk. A woman, though. With a woman. Yeah, they were like, you like dog, don't say nothing. And then they had that pillow talk in the next thing. Yo, what? Hey. You like, what happened? And he's hey, like, listen. oh, I forgot. Like, <laughs> he, I was, Man, that pillow talk has got me messed up all over the board. Uh, that yeah. pillow talk has messed me all the way up. You no know way. You don't even get no more pillows. <laughs> no, I don't. They, they, they've they been taken away for real. No more pillows. Okay. <laughs> no more pills. Oh, you finding the plug now? I, I, I better. Right. Oh, Martel, Martel, Martel. Oh, I swear. The one thing, though, Martel, regardless of how stressed out you are, of what you have to do with the kids and drop them off, you need to find a way to make it to that gym and work out. Oh, that's that's a must. That's gonna be that's gonna be a part of my um, my branding right there. Is uh, me standing in the gym, trying to look good, try to stay fit. You know, give the the women something they want. You know, something they want to see, and um, I'm for it. So you haven't um, signed up for any dating apps yet, right? I don't want to see you on none of those dating nah, apps. And honestly, swiping right because you didn't give them. No, they want to see. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, nah, uh-uh. <clears throat> I don't even know anything about the dating sites. Your face is up there. They swipe right. I don't want to see it. I'm just. <laughs> oh man, man. Hey, I might need to get on one of them dating sites. I tell you that. No. So, do you think that you will give dating a break? Like, no. I- honestly, I I love marriage. You love marriage, okay? That's- I love marriage. I love relationships. You know. Um, I mean, if you, if if one would say to ask my wife, was Martella a good husband? She would be like, yes, and she can name out all the things that will show you that I was a good man, a good husband. But you know, just I fucked up. You know, when it came down to the um, infidelity. But then again, on the other hand, too, you know, when you take some away from a man that belongs to him, I mean, what you expect? You know. Well, you so, know, very weird because you know. If you're a person that's very spiritually conscious, one of the things, even a command in the Bible, it says, render to the husband his due, render to your wife her due. So it doesn't say like, oh, it says don't go to sleep in a provoked state. Because if you go to sleep in a provoked state, nobody's due is getting rendered. (laughs) Right. Yeah. That's probably the main reason. So Partly if a wife is withholding on her husband and or vice versa, then they might be in part responsible for the infidelity. Each person has to look where they play a role in what happened and the outcome of things. Yeah, I totally agree. But then next thing you know, so on the other hand, someone would be like, so why you doesn't leave her? Why you go cheat on her? Why you doesn't leave her? And like I said early in this conversation, I never left. I would. I told my wife I would never leave you because I know what we have is great, but it just when I stepped out, I just it was. I'm a lover. I'm not gonna lie. I've never been a cheater, but I'm a lover. You know. So me stepping out, goddamn. Right. Yeah, well, and I can't help that. You know. I, it seems like the consensus amongst the people is like. Men, if you step out and maybe you just be with somebody else and it's not a emotional like relationship, 
But if you step out and then you're getting flowers or showing any type of affection, then in the yeah. mind, it's like, oh no, you she got my affection too. Like, you know, yeah. and I think that just rubs a woman a totally different way than uh, some prostitute or one night stand or somebody in the supermarket you met that day. You know, I don't know. You might have to. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. I thought you was frozen, frozen. No, and, you, and, and you're right about that too. <clears throat> I mean, that's how most people do, you know. Um, but they just, it just went my cup of tea, you know. Like I, like I said, I've never been a cheater, so I'm not the type of cheater that Melody said I am, you right. know, because she she's gonna tell you that Martell been with this one person. Yeah, you what? So you're not a serial <laughs> cheater. Correct. I'm. Yeah, I'm not a serial. Well, if, if you want to say that me being with that one person continuously is considered a, a serial cheater, then I am, you know? Yeah, no, that's a serial is over and over and over. Like, that's more of a relationship. And to have that type of relationship for that long, it's more of a friendship. You yeah, know? and that, 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 that's what it was. Understanding uh, all that. It's kind of like that fallback person, you know, like somebody is your backbone. You may have this person over here for family, but yeah. then you always have that one person you can kind of confide and they be a little more loose with. Um, I guess that's why they say there's no yeah. such thing as platonic relationships because eventually the platonicness will go sexual if you guys have that type of connection. Right. I agree. So um, I guess the people want to know if you were divorced, are you like, okay, you love love, but you're not going to go get married right away. There was a rumor that you was already engaged and they already had you at the altar again with the divorce papers not drying. I heard that was the dumbest thing I ever heard. No, they don't matter. <laughs> No, it, it, it'll be a while before I get married again. Um, I'm definitely going to have to date. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to hold a, a few hands before I say, um, get on my knees, you know? Right. And um, So, but yeah, but I'm not even thinking about that right now. I'm thinking about, you know, my children. I'm thinking about really dating someone that I could, you know, get along with and have fun with and things of that nature. Um, yeah, really help me out. Right. I got four kids, you know what I'm saying? And that's true because a lot of times that helps a man get get that out of his system. It helps it helps heal his heart. The next person, you know, yeah. they heal differently. Men heal differently. They'll just find a new friend. They won't maybe not get married right away, but just having that person there that they feel understands them it means a lot to a man. Now. I don't want people feeling like, oh, you know, why? how is she sitting there being Team Martell and he did this and he did that. But sometimes you can, if you're not biased, because we weren't, I'm not friends with you or her. So it's it's easy for me to look at things through a different picture, a different window. I'm not married, so I'm not like, oh, if my husband, if I was married, I probably would be like, if my husband ever this, but the one thing I've learned is you can never say what you would never do. You can never say what your husband would never do, what your kids would never do. Because when circumstances befall people, you don't know what hearts may fall. You don't. That's it. You don't. You sure don't. Say that. I totally agree. I just think it's totally wrong for people to judge other people because A, nobody's perfect. B, Infidelity might be your thing, but them over here robbing and stealing might be their thing. Like and going to get drunk, high, all of that. Right. Yeah. Still all bad. So no one's really in a position to say, you know, what you should have been doing and how dare he when they're not in your house seeing what's going on in your life. So that's, that's it. what that's I think about it personally now. Um, of course, women hurt women, hurt people, hurt people. So I know it's gonna be some back and forth. I saw that trailer, and I saw you getting stuff Ooh. at you. I think I seen some eggs and apples and shoes. 
this. <laughs> I was like, run, Marto, run. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that was something else. I didn't know if they edited it. Yeah, it got it got heated out there. You know, I probably said something. You did say something like, you know, you know how to say stuff. No, no, that's the way it was. And cut it. You just cut it with a knife. You just use the tongue. Yeah, you know, um, you know, that's some of Melody's medicine, right? That, that, that's some of Melody's doings right there, you know. But it's like um, her, 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 and I sometimes we're the same person, though, you know. Yeah. Well, and, 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 now, and now, and now, and now, I've come out my shell. So now you're gonna, you guys are gonna see like a, a whole different Martell because I'm not protecting her no more. She showed me who she is, so now I'm gonna show her and everybody else too who I am. You know, it's totally different. Wow. Totally different Martell. I'm excited for the new season. Um, I think you are trying to do the right thing. You still have your children. You had to put them to bed tonight. You had them all day today. You always post them online. And it's important. I love the way the girls are around you because they feel protected. And it's so important for little girls to feel that protection from their dad. Because if they don't, they're looking for it in the street. It's important mm. for young Martel to see you being a man and you teach him things he should do as far as protecting his daughter, um, sisters. So I like to see Martel in protective mode when I saw them out, you know, just being a big brother. And they all got along yeah. together. You can tell, like, they're, you know, they're family. So they're going to grow. That's it. The love is there. The love is there. That's the key. And love is a learned behavior. If they did not see love, they oh, would not show love. Right. Oh, no. Oh, you better believe it. You know, I've always been a strong believer. Like, we, you know, we hug each other. You know, we tell each other we love them. Um, you know, we apologize for things that we do wrong. You know, it's like, um, you know, it's like, you know, being kind. Yes. You know, you know, I teach kindness here, you know, so. And that's one thing I've always taught them since they were since Mariah was a little, little baby. Mariah, my oldest, you know. So, yes. and that's one thing that I've never because this is my heart too, though. And I got that from my mom, you know. Um, so my mom she instilled that into me, and I instilled it into my kids too in terms of just being nice and and loving each other and like let's hug, you know. I can yeah. we all hug. That's my thing. Yeah. Now the picture was so cute with you combing the baby's hair. <laughs> Melania is Melania, right? It, it's Melani. Melani, okay. And she yeah, has not Trump cry. It's like, and then that frown turned into a smile at the end, like, thank you, Daddy. <laughs> but you Oh, was, hey, that was amazing to me. <laughs> what were you putting in her head? Hey, what was you slicking some it? Type of, um, I don't know the name of the stuff. Something my mama gave me. Oh, it wasn't no pomade, was it? It wasn't that sulfur eight. <laughs> was it sulfur? Oh, oh no. Oh. Poor I don't know what it was, but it um it slicked the hair down. <laughs> she don't care about her hair being it's something, it's something dude. <laughs> pandemic. She not worried about her hair being slicked down during the pandemic. <laughs> oh, I had to I had to get it in. I had to hit because we were stepping out. Right. I love it. I love it. Um, I love the interview that you did with Rolling Out, and I love how they feature, you know, the good things about you, because you do seem like a very good person, a very kind-hearted person, and TV seems to, like, broaden and just make stuff so big, and not that infidelity is not big, but you know how it's always heightened, and then it overshadows the good that you do. So all people yeah. it's like, you like, I've been good like all 10 years. And now you see these two things are defined. This is not going to define me. So that's the important thing that I don't see you letting that define who you are as a man, as a business person, as a dad, you know, and as a friend. Right, right. And, and I can't. And, and one shouldn't allow um, one thing to define who you are. I mean, because it can destroy you if you allow it, you know. Right. And and I, and I feel if you really are a good person, it's going to show. If your heart is good, for real, it's going to show. It'll show through all that little negativity. 
um, that's going on. Like um, with my infidelity, everybody talk about it and everything that I'm going through. But I look at it like, okay, I mean, I, I'll do better, you know. Um, I'm a good person, but you'll know, you'll see all this good stuff that I do because right. that's who I am. Right. Yeah. I saw you giving away those 500 coats in the winter time to all those families and you and your frat brothers. Is that your frat? Yeah, that's what it's all about. Well, um, um, Arthur Singh, he's um, a co-owner of a, a local car dealership here. Okay. Um, so he and I, we, we put it together. But my frat brothers, um, Cap FSI Incorporated, um, they, they came by and um, donated some of their time and effort. So we appreciated that. But yeah, that's what it's all about. Giving back, helping people and right. doing whatever you can do. No matter what it is you can do, I mean, help. Do something. That's and it. Do something. It's about the brotherhood, you know? Yeah on the show have a brotherhood and i'm glad that you're going to show that that bond can't be broken because a lot of men don't develop real friendships with other men you know like it's not right. wrong with that because then yeah. you have the boys and they can give you advice and y'all give each other advice y'all stop each other from getting locked up you know like it's okay. your boys. You, you have to have that in your life yeah that's very good. We don't have to worry about you being on in the mental depression ward. <laughs> well, we got to come and get you out of there. And that's good that you acknowledge the need to work out, stay physically fit. You know, those things help. Oh, oh no, no. Hey. Can you hear me? Look. Yeah, that, that gym helps me out a great deal. It okay. does. I go. I spend about two. Is it empty? You can't hear me good. Is it empty in the gym though? Say it again. Is the gym empty when you go? I don't know about the gym. Yeah, typically when I go, it's um early in the morning or um or late at night or something of that nature. But when I go, it's probably about ten people in the gym, which is no okay. one around me. And you go every day? No, oh. no, four, four days a week. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not a gym junkie. I just know what I need to do. Like you know, I don't drink sodas. I try to stay away from tea and all that kind of stuff. So you know, I try to just you know live live a healthy lifestyle. Like, you know, I try to eat good too. Try to. Try to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, what you say? I said it comes to desserts when it comes to the dessert. That's a whole other thing. Oh, oh, oh no, the desserts will get me every time. I love some good dessert. Period. Give me some of that chocolate. That's it. Yes. Well, I hope you see you Saturday at Nouveau. I hope you're there for your own view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I look to be there. I'm lo I'm looking forward to it. Okay, well, I'm gonna let you go because you got a big day ahead of you tomorrow. Look, it's hump day, it's Wednesday. That means y'all all for the week. So love on the kids. Love and marriage Brazil, January 30th. I can't wait. Martel Ho, um, you guys don't beat up on Martel too bad. So he's, he's got a lot going on. But he's a person. He's still human. So, you know, with the comments, he's a person. He has feelings. So, you know, let's let's just see. We're going to have to let him have it a little bit. You know, he can't just get away scot-free, but yeah. <laughs> let's go easy on him. Give it to me. Give it, Give to, it to me. me. I'm ready for it. Give it to me. Well, you got to be ready for it because then I'm going to feel like I feel. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I, I'm ready for it. You know what? I'm going to ignore it all. I ain't going to read any of it, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to hold you. Most definitely. Big time. All right. Evening, and you are tuned in to. Oh, I was telling them with the intro that this is real wife convo, so it's R E E L, like the film reel, and it's women in film, food, fashion, or fitness and entertainment. Because a lot of women at first it was just women in film, but it's a lot of women that do fitness, fashion, and who was the other one? Food, especially the food. Because it's a lot in Atlanta, the females are taking over the restaurant industry and they are making that dough. I see that. I well, see that. So I had to break it out. But each month we feature one man of the month. We call him a mife. 
<laughs> a man oh, wow. the entertainment. Yeah, yeah. Our life of the month. <laughs> okay. Well, you got to invite me to um some of those female-owned restaurants. Oh yeah, we're gonna come here, and there's already um eleven alive, and I can say this here because they told me that they want to do a celebrity and food like to have you taste it and see your opinion on it. So we already got that set up. We're waiting on you. There we go. Restaurant and everything. So we are just waiting to insert you. And they are there ready. We go. Yes. All, All right. right. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I appreciate you. Okay. Well, I will talk to you later. And you're tuning in to Real Wife Combos, Real Wife Conversations. So can you give me a drop before you leave? Martel Hope tuned in to Real Wife Conversations. Tune into Real Wife. Uh -huh. Woman in film food, blah, blah, blah. Oh, Lord. Cool. Already. So tune in to Real Wife Conversations. <laughs> what I'm to do? From OWN TV, Love and Marriage Huntsville, and you're tuned in to Real Wife Conversations. Okay. All right. Hey, what's up? This is Martel Holt from Love and Marriage Huntsville. You are now tuned in to Real Wife Conversations. Yay! <laughs> you had me with makeup on and everything. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what, what's up. Not happening no more. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. Have a good evening. All uh, right, you too. Bye bye.